with probability density, which I will not use much explicitly, it may contain Dirac, so that uh, it may be different whether you put an equal sign here or not, so depending on whether there is a Dirac A or B, but anyway, I will not use explicitly uh, probability density. And then one can define expectation of x, which I will always denote e of x, which is equal to the integral of psi, e of psi, e psi, minus infinity, plus infinity. Uh, this integral, formally mathematically, this integral may not exist. I will consider the same And uh, yes, and of course, this is uh, an approximation of E of X is obtained by taking the average of the large number of the realization of this random variable. And we have the theorem, the theorem of uh, large numbers says that with probability one, this expectation, this average tends to the expectation. And one defines the variance of x, of course, which is equal to the expectation of p minus x minus x squared, and this is the difference between the expectation of x squared minus the expectation of x squared. And also, the variance may not exist even when the expectation exists, but I will not consider the case of the variance then. If I consider a cutoff of random variable, yes, uh, one thing I will systematically use, unless otherwise, but it will be <coughs> x prime to mean the difference between x and its expectation, the center of the variable x, x prime, which of course I expectation, expectation zero. And if I consider a couple of random variable, x and y, I can define the covariance between x and y, which by definition is the expectation of the product x prime y prime. The expectation of the product of its corresponding central variables. And this defines for random variables defined of the same <coughs> trial space a scalar product, that is a bilinear function, which is positive when x equals y, and define the scalar products with notion of length, uh, orthogonal projection, and so on, in particular, angle, and the angle between two random variables is given by phi cosinus phi equals the correlation coefficient between x and y, which is the element of the the covariance divided Product of the parameters square root the product of the standard deviation. Okay, all that is perfectly classical. Now I consider a vector or random variables, which I denote x, board case, which is a vector, an ensemble of n random variables, x1, x2, xn. It can be, for instance, you can, it can be considered as a vector or a random variable. The value of pressure at all which point, which points of the model at a given time. Or the value of pressure at all meteorological stations at the surface of the Earth at a given synoptic time. It can be <coughs> the whole vector, the whole state vector of the model, considered as being taking different realizations over time, and as a random variable. And as a random, and as a random vector. Uh, it can be the whole history of the disk of the atmosphere explore as described in the model over a period of uh, a period of let us say 24 hours. And you consider different 24 hour periods and we may consider this a realization of the same random vector. So this random vector is an expectation, E of x, whose components are the expectations of the components of vector. And there is a covariance matrix, E of x prime, x prime transpose, 
which is the matrix, the nth n matrix, whose entries are the covariances of the components of the XI prime x prime. Well, two fixed notations. Two fixed notations. The vectors, that's important because I will constantly use vectors, will be considered as column vectors. Here, yeah, I've written 1x1, x2, xn. Vector is a column. So if you have two column vectors of the same dimension, you can do two things. You can take the scalar product, that is two, the x and y, let us say, with the same dimension, and this I will denote x, x, uh, x transpose y. That's the scalar, the scalar product of two vectors. And you can also take x. I can also put x y transpose x transpose x y transpose which is that and this is a square matrix which is the tensor products on x and y with a dimension n n so make a distinction between this which is the scalar and that which is the matrix now so we have the covariance matrix of the random vector by itself. So that's the square matrix of this type. This is a tensor, actually. This is actually a twice contravariant tensor, although it is called the covariance matrix. Uh, whose entries are the covariances of the components of the vector XR. This is, of course, a dimension and n. It is, of course, symmetric. And it is symmetric non-negative. This can be easily, easily seen. I will do it on the other side. I take the combination sigma over i of long i x prime i. Well, long i are scalar, which are not random. I take the square of this, and then summation over o i i prime of long i lambda i prime, it's i, it's i prime. Did I put, no, here I put j, it's i, j. And now I take the expectation of this. And the equal to the expectation, in the summation, i, i prime, and lambda i, lambda i prime, expectation of x i, x i prime. And this is just the linear form constructed of this matrix. And see, since this is the expectation of a quantity which is positive on zero, which is designed positive of zero. So this means that whatever the lambda i, this expression is positive, which simply amounts to say that this matrix is then negative. And it is strictly definite positive, except if there is a linear relationship, a non-trivial linear relationship between the x prime, a, x prime i, which is not zero. It is not strictly positive if there are non-zero lambda i, so that this quantity is equal to zero to probability one. So the covariance matrix of vector by itself is a symmetric matrix, which is non-negative and normally Strictly positive, unless there is an exact linear relationship between the exa. The, the, the now, I can also define the covariance matrix of two random vectors, whatever they are, even with different dimensions. <coughs> I can take here this vector and take x, y transpose, and take, take, consider an unbiased vector, and consider the expectation of this matrix, that is, the matrix whose entries are the expectations of all, all the couples between the component of x and the components of y. And this is the covariance matrix of two different vectors, in dimension n and b. And this is always defined. Uh, the equation that I'm going to use, and the equation that Pavel is going to use, in particular in the context of canon filter, will be full of covariance matrices of a kind. So, in order to use and understand, of course, you already use the equation, it is necessary 
fully to be familiar with this mission. Are there questions? I'm just uh, but rather elementary, but uh, everything that uh, I think both and I, both Raven uh, and I are going to do now will be full of covariance metrics. Okay. Now I can go one step further and consider a random function. So a random function of some argument psi, I don't choose the x. Because, as I said, x will always denote, denote not, uh, not uh, geometrical coordinate, but will denote, denote my n -num, the unknown state vector. The quantities I want to determine, <coughs> essentially, are the quantities which define the state of the atmospheric flow at a given time or over a period of time. So I consider a function of a variable which I denote psi. It can be a one-dimensional geometrical variable. It can be a multi-dimensional geometrical variable. It can be time. Actually, when the argument is time, the random functions are usually called stochastic processes. Just another word for the same notion. Stochastic processes more or less used to respect to the case when underlying coordinate is time. Uh, so uh, now, what is, if you think of probabilities of realizations of the process, the output of which can differ and vary, then you can consider a random function. As being, for instance, you can consider one special dimension of phi of x equals something like phi of x equals a cosine, let us say, omega psi plus some delta. You can consider that. So for a omega and delta given, this is the function of psi cosine function, and then you may consider that A and omega and delta or one of these or two of these and are random variables. And then this defines a random function and you may consider all kinds of properties of this random function. And of course I can define for any psi the expectation E of phi of psi and the corresponding centered variable. I, for instance, uh, in this case, if A as, uh, A, I suppose, omega is not random, because that makes algebra very difficult, but if A and delta is independent, and our, well, if A is independent of omega and delta, if A has ex expectation zero, then the expectation of phi of psi as a given psi is equal to zero. You can define the variance of phi of psi, I mean the point psi, and you consider now the correlation function that is given two points psi and psi two, psi one and psi two, consider two points psi one and psi two, you may consider the covariance of phi point psi and point psi 1 and point psi 2. So you have a function, not in our function, of both coordinates psi 1 and psi 2. And this is called the covariance function. And it is an obvious extension of a notion of covariance matrix. The covariance matrix is square with dimension n. And if you consider a covariance matrix of a random vector with respect to itself, then it will be now a function, in case of psi 1, psi 2, the same function of 5, it will be a covariance matrix. It will be a kind of covariance matrix of infinite energy. It is a covariance function. We constantly speak of covariance function. You can also define the covariance function between two. Random function, phi and psi, 
defined on the same space and not even on the same space, and consider the covariance of the phi at point psi and psi at point psi prime. This is the function of the two arguments, psi and psi prime. And of course, I can define the correlation by normalizing the covariance by the corresponding standard deviation. OK. So this maybe I see a few faces. We seem to, OK. Maybe it's slightly new for some uh, Before uh, I ask you if you have questions, I give examples. Borrowed from meteorology. With an example, which I think for a paper from Nils Gustafsson, who is here in Stockholm in the Swedish Meteorological Institute, at least was for a long time. He's in Germany. He moved now. to Oslo. No, he's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's in Stockholm. He will be here next week. Next week. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, this is a paper which uh, you wrote on time ago, and he gave an example, and I found that very <coughs> useful, very instructive, as didactic example. So, this is the eyes line of the autocorrelation of the 500 hectopascal geopotential between this one meteorological session, which is Hanover in northern Germany here, and surrounding session. So, here, the function phi, so I repeat the question, covariance function of phi between sine, psi 1, and psi 2 equal the expectation phi prime x1 on the product phi prime x1, phi prime psi 1, psi 2. So the covariance <coughs> of the random function phi, the covariance function of phi at point x1 and x2 is the covariance of phi at point x1 and phi at point x, uh, psi 1 and phi at point, point psi 2. So this illustrates the same thing. It is not the covariance, it is the correlation. That is, it's pointed here, are normalized by the standard deviation, expectation of phi prime of psi square of the uh, uh, psi square take it, or the square root times the incentive of psi. And it is an autocorrelation because it is 500, uh, 500 ectopotential zero potential with itself. So this shows, as a function of psi 2, this covariance function for psi 1 equals Hanover. So this is a cross-section with psi 1 equals Hanover. But the significance is very simple. It is simply the correlation of the 500 hectopotential potential in Hanover and elsewhere, in between Hanover and so one uh, feature is obvious. The eyes lines are about circular. So that the correlation is essentially a function of a distance between Hanover and the other point. The zero eyes line, you can see it well, it has been an old paper, so this is as you can see, I've been scanned. Uh, the zero eye line is here. This is cor corresponds to slightly negative value of the correlation. So this means that the extension of the correlation is something like Britain, I think the north-south distance of Britain is 1,000 kilometers, or France, I know it is. So the distance over which the 500 hectopotential potential is positively correlated is about 1,500 or maybe 1,800, 1800 kilometers. And at larger distances, at least in this direction, it becomes slightly anti-correlated. This, of course, is the basic information to be introduced in any estimation process before even introducing the dynamics of a system. If I have, I spoke this morning of interpolation of uh, measurements performed in meteorological stations to weak points. It is obvious that uh, this kind of information I, I to be introduced. You have a measure, if I have a measure of uh, the surface pressure of 500 hectopascal joule potential, which is strongly correlated with surface pressure. Later. 
uh, in uh, Stockholm, this gave me information of a surface pressure of 500 0.5 and 500 millibar potential <coughs> in uh, Gothenburg, in Oslo too, may in Paris to some extent, but certainly not in uh, Valparaiso or Oakland in New Zealand. But obvious, but it is an information to be introduced. It's in the estimation piece of a basic elementary information to be introduced. And this is somewhat similar. Now it is in, uh, just what I was saying one minute ago. A cross correlation, cross meaning now that it is not the same field which is correlated with itself. It is one field, 500 hectopascal geopotential in station 0134R, which I think must be also airport, yeah? and the surface pressure elsewhere. So this is a correlation between uh, 500 watt zero potential in Oslo and surface pressure elsewhere. Again, the ISO correlation lines are still circular. But the maximum of correlation, which is not one, of course, here yeah, the maximum of correlation was one, of course, is not one. Because you have point A, point A five, there is no either line for point nine. So the correlation is not total. And more than that, the maximum of correlation is not at the vertical of station R, which means that statistically meteorological structure are in a sense slightly slanted, slanted particularly. It is normal that there is a positive correlation with the five and zero potential and and um, and surface pressure. Absolutely obvious. If I have a maximum of surface pressure of the ground at the point, it means that the isobar, the isobaric surface, which will go for this point, doesn't exist if it's at the ground. So the isobaric surface, which corresponds to the pressure the web pressure a little higher than the surface must be something like that. And so on. So it is absolutely normal that there is a positive correlation between these two quantities. But the correlation is perfect in the sense that there is a slight horizontal displacement, which means that statistically the meteorological structure has slanted. And the slant is actually called slant in this field. Okay. Other example. Now this is the autocorrelation function of a 500 minibar components of a wind over northern America. And there are two sets of curves, the dash curves, which correspond to elongated patterns in the east-west direction, east direction, that corresponds to the east-west, the U wind component, in meteorology, the U component of the wind <coughs> is the east-west component, connected positively to the east, west, west east component, and there are <coughs> thick lines which correspond to the autocorrelation of the wind, the wind component, that is the northward component, counted positively to the north. So this is the autocorrelation function of the U and wind components of the wind between this point, somewhere in the middle of the inner continental United States, and other points. And you see that each of these two correlations field show elongation in the direction of the corresponding components. So the correlation for one component is not at all isotropic. But the whole thing is that it's atropic in two dimensions, in the sense that the pattern of the UV component is approximated to a high degree of accuracy by rotating the pattern of the component by pi over 2. So globally, as a tensor of two correlations of a vector to itself, it is basically isotropic in the sense. Okay. Another example. This is now, again, from Niels Gustafsson paper, autocorrelation of errors, rocket. I'll tell you what's the matter in what maybe the matter that you can have. It's not the autocorrelation correlation of a film themselves, but correlation of errors. <laughs> All what we do, when I spoke of 
when I spoke of a Bayesian estimation, I spoke of a probability distribution of errors. And this is what matters. Probability distribution of errors in the data. This is what matters. And certain errors are presented in certain. So autocorrelation of errors in 12 or 12 hour numerical forecast of surface pressure in a reference station, which happened to be Stockholm. I've not taken it because I was going to have not chosen this picture because I was coming to Stockholm. I've been shooting this picture for a long time because I find it indestructible. But it happened to be Stockholm and other species. So now it is different quantity, 12 hour numerical forecast error. Uh, but still the same features are obvious. obvious. The auto correlation is, high, is isotropic. The auto correlation curve are almost circles, centered on Stockholm. And 0 0.1, it becomes 0, 0. The auto correlation becomes 0 at a distance between 1,000 and 2,000 kilometers. Again, the same, fit, uh, the same feature we have seen in the full field which is again apparent here, which was again here on the air on the, on the, on the, on the uh, correlation of the air. Okay, so these are three sample four simple examples of this nation of covariance functions. Are there <coughs> questions on this stage? On this notion of covariance function? No. Yes, Father. This uh, correlation functions from ancient times from ancient time. Yes. Yes. How they were obtained? Now, uh, now it has not been it has not in terms of correlation, it has not changed very much. Of course, the error of the statistic is smaller, but the correlation is normalized by the error, so the correlation is the well, What's uh, the new response? Uh, what is that? You showed the covariance and the correlation uh, yes. from the new response from the 70. <laughs> was it the covariance? It was, oh, I think all what I showed was actually correlation. Computed the, the covariances, the correlation between Hanover and the other station. So, so that's plotted the value and then draw, drew either lines, I think by hand. In so that's uh, not uh, instantaneous dynamic correlation. No, 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 just to be clear, these were not computed, say, through a year. They were computed, say, for a month like February, and then they took it in February 1962, 61. Probably so. Yes. Although it doesn't say that, probably so. I've never, been, I've never looked at the origin of the uh, Probably so. Or yeah, maybe, not, maybe not a month, but a season. Yeah. yeah the we structures were changed from, uh, through the year. Anyway, uh, I present that not to present. Uh, very accurate, accurate meteorological information. It's to didactic examples to explain the significance of those quantities uh, and to explain why this gets of quantities actually come up naturally in uh, our problem. I will show, as I will show you, this quantity just come up naturally. You have these uh, two-point correlation functions for the u win and the v win, yes. um, and you said they, there must be a 90 degrees rotation uh, to identify the two among each other. Is that all that is, or is, a, is it really just a rotation, or could there be? Oh, I know there be a slight. And it no, 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 maybe it's not an exact rotation. I would not say. No, it's probably not an exact rotation. But isn't there a, a connection with longitudinal and, and, and transverse correlation functions, which? Uh, might incorporate, for example, the constraint of uh, compressibility. Uh, yes, uh, well, how does it compress? Yeah, yes, that's an interesting question. How does incompressibility of geostrophic balance? I show later schemes 
which was defined how uh, how um, how geostrophicity uh, comes up in there. Uh, I must say I don't know. I cannot answer precisely. It is not certainly not an exact position of pi over two. Actually, that's a little bit obvious when we go to higher latitude for such a report when the UMD. But still, I am not too well. My purpose is here to illustrate this notion. And what I think I wanted to say something more about it will come again. consider that uh, psi is, uh, is, uh, uh, is a multidimensional uh, geometry to hold your position in Euclidean, Euclidean, Euclidean space, in plane or three-dimensional volume. One particular situation is the equation when the covariance between psi, psi 1 and psi 2. I put here that to mean that this is a vector variable, is only a function, let us say gamma, of a vector difference psi 1 minus psi 2. It is only a function of a vector difference. Then the covariance function is said to be homogeneous. If you translate it in space, it is invariant. For instance, if I take this covariance function, uh, uh, random function, A omega delta are random, but delta is independent of omega and A, and as uniformly distributed over 0 and 2 pi. You imagine in the name, this means that statistically this function, but if you shift the function by an, 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 by an angle, an angle by an uh, function of space, then uh, the new function you obtain is as, pro as probable and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, 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 the probability is invariant in translational, translational shift. And these are the consequences, almost obvious, that the corresponding covariance function will be homogeneous in respect to the variable of psi. Uh, a second property, I said it, in that the case when the covariance function is function only, only of a distance between the two uh, psi 1 and psi 2, that is covariance of phi between psi 1 and psi 2, and the function, let us say, h of only the distance between psi 1 and psi 2. Of course, it is a stronger property, and this is called isotropy. Uh, well, of course, uh, Of course, it can be an isotropic for psi 1 given and independent of the orientation of psi 2, which was the case of the uh, example I said, but isotropy is generally used for the case of the only function of a distance, whatever the, the geometrical distance, whatever psi 1 and psi, whatever the position of psi 1 and psi 2. At the surface of a sphere, these two properties are indistinguishable, are the same, and then one speak of homogeneous function, it depends on the covariance function, which at the surface of the sphere is function only of the spherical distance between psi 1 and psi 2. 
Okay, I come back to that. To my problem. I have a random field, five shots. I have an observation state work. P stage is repeated in this case. And for one particular realization of this random field, I take observations at those points. So at point J, <coughs> point psi J, as the observation, Y J equals phi psi J plus some error epsilon, epsilon J. J varying from 1 to 3. And that makes up a vector Y with component Y J. So I'm going to do one here. my problem, find xA, and I consider now as I estimate xA plus gamma, and which I not xA, x, uh, x hat. I consider x hat minus x square. This is xA minus x square plus 2 square, and s a minus x square. Uh, no, x8 minus x square plus 2 gamma x8 minus x plus gamma square. That's right, because x8 equals x8. So, sorry. So, so. x8 hat equals x8, the minimizing solution, plus gamma. So, x8 minus x square and x8 minus x square plus 2 gamma. And I take the expectation of that. So the gamma is not random, the expectation is like that. And since Xa is my optimal solution, this must be minimum from gamma equals zero. Otherwise, I would have a gamma which is not zero, which would, do, which would produce an XA hat, which is better than XA, and not the really, really case because XA is optimal. So this implies that P of XA minus X is point zero. But XA is unbiased. This condition, X is present, but XA is biased. That's rather obvious. And given that, it is saying that I have, so 
e of an x a equal alpha to sigma beta j y j. I took the expectation of at a of x a equal alpha to sigma beta j a of y j. And I take the difference x a minus expectation of x a. The expectation of x a is expectation of x because my estimate is minus equals alpha minus zero, sigma of j, of beta j, y j, minus expectation of y j. Which means that if I do, if I do the estimation on the central variable, on the variable from which I have subtracted the expectation, then I don't need a constant term in my equation. I don't need a constant term alpha in my equation. <coughs> alpha here. Uh, I say that as trivial as it may be. I say that because many often people just try directly this equation without the term alpha, without mentioning that is legitimate only if one uses unbiased central variables and that in order to do that it is first necessary to center the variables that to be subtract from the observations and for the variable to be estimated their expectation which must be known in the first place. It's obvious that I stress this point, this point of unbiasedness as elementary as it is is not always explicitly mentioned. So now, okay. now I come to this equation. So I have that. So I consider central variables, and I look for the beta j, which minimizes the zero, because the alpha has been defined. The alpha is zero. I do that. For instance, for doing that, I can denote when when I do that, I'm looking for the combination of y j, y j minus e y j, which I can denote y prime j according to the fact that I decided a standard variable to be denoted by prime. I look for the linear combination of the y prime j which minimizes the variance of a difference with x prime. <coughs> and so, since uh, the variance is a scalar product, the covariance is a scalar product, this means that xc minus e of x is the orthogonal projection in the sense of covariance of the center x prime onto the p dimensional space spanned by the y prime in just an orthogonal projection. <coughs> and I, I write that the difference between x a, x and x a is orthogonal, that is uncorrelated with each of the y j. And this gives me a linear system of equations for the beta j. I can also explicitly compute, develop the expression for the variance, and the right that is in minimum, that is right, that is derivative, the derivative that is given for respect to each of the beta j is zero. And you obtain the same linear system of equation. And the linear system of equation that you obtain, <coughs> all that is elementary, but I take some time for this one in like this one. Linear system of equation of your 10 is that my vector beta of beta j beta of beta j is 
times the matrix which turns out to be the covariance matrix <coughs> otherwise. So here, one more idea of organality equals the covariance vector of minus x with the y. That is the linear system I obtained from the I could and so the solution to my system is what I put in here. Beta equals the covariance vector. That is the vector. X prime here is a scalar. Y prime is a vector. I don't know if it's perfectly explicit on the screen. On my screen, it becomes very clear. But it is very clear that y prime is in both phase and x prime in an ordinary phase. The beta equals the covariance vector between x prime, my unknown, and the observation multiplied by the inverse of the covariance matrix <coughs> between the, one, uh, the covariance matrix of the vector y. And then I always come down with the equation. And alpha, which is the obtained from this equation, is equal to e of x minus beta transpose e of y. The systematic bias. And if you look at two, the computation for the obtained minimum, and the obtained, but the minimum of the R is the variance of x, which in any sense is a measure of a spread of x in the absence of a knowledge of y, minus a term which is positive, and you can see this is positive because this is a covariance matrix. Well, it is an inverse covariance matrix, but it is symmetric and definitely positive as the direct covariance matrix. Multiplied by one vector, one uh, row vector on the left, and the same kind of vector on the right. So this quantity is positive. So this means that the uh, variance of the error on F is smaller than the raw variance on x. We have gained the information and we have set we said we have set we said that reducing decreasing the variance amounts to gaining new information. Actually the first formula is rather obvious. I do not do it right here. I said that x sum and x the estimate is the projection of x prime projection in the sense of covariance onto the space span, span by the y prime j. So this is the space span by prime j. And this is the orthogonal protection, the orthogonality here. And I simply use the, the Pythagorean theorem here. I write that the variance of the error, which is that, the square of the German distance, is equal to the square of the hypotenuse, that is, by of, uh, of uh, uh, yes, but it's a variance of the coin prime minus the variance of its prime itself, which turned out to be equal to that from this equation. So this is what we do. Absolutely in term. First year. But in a sense, it has the basis of and the estimation, as I said, in many terms of the deviation from the expectations from, uh, from uh, deviation from any system of deviation, x prime and y prime, as expect as deviation from expectation. But the estimate is entirely made in terms of deviation from expectation. Question? Okay. Now, I suppose that I come back to my original description. Of course, x and y should not complete anything in what I'm saying. As long as, this, as I know the statistics, as long as my statistical correlation between x prime and, uh, and uh, y prime, I can, uh, I can do that. The quality of the estimate will be the quality of the expectation in various variances I put in there. But the x and y could be 
activity in it. Uh, the syndrome situation in the operation. Yes, it still comes. Uh, okay. The estimate is done in terms of deviation of expectation. So I must know the expectation because if it's expected, I either assume the expectation is zero, or if I'm not zero, I will from them from the data. In other case, I must know them. Now. Make a hypothesis of them. Once I know them, everything is expressed in terms of covariances between the variables. The covariances come up naturally in the problem. And then come up naturally for various different reason. I started with a linear scheme and then I minimized the quadratic quantity. So my algebra will never come out of quadratic quantities. So it's clearly expressed in terms of covariance. So in order to do that, I need to know the expectation and covariances of the different variables, both observed variables and the variables to be updated. That's all. I don't need more. I don't need, uh, I don't, I don't need additional moments. Of course, I don't need any additional moments because I set my problem in terms of additional moments with the decision anyway. Okay. So I come back. Uh, and for instance, if the correlation, the covariance between x prime and y prime is zero, so there is no statistical covariance between x prime and y prime, then this term is zero, and x a is indeed the expectation of x. The x estimates, I don't know if you can have, in the least square sense, in the absence of any knowledge other than the probability distribution of x. Uh, well, one remark which may be worth doing, I did not say it. If two random variables are independent, statistically independent, then the correlation is zero. The covariance is zero. The reverse is not true. And one obvious example is to take two variables, which I call capital X, which is equal to cosine phi, and capital Y, which is equal to sine phi, where phi is uniformly distributed between 0 and 2 pi. These two variables are obviously not independent because x squared and phi squared equal 1. And still, they are interrelated because each of these has x in the 0 and the expectation of x y, which is integral between 0 and 2 pi of cosinus phi sinus phi, in phi, is equal to 0. So these are variables which are statistically interrelated, but not independent at all. Now independent variables are interrelated. Now, if you take two variables which are globally Gaussian, a couple of two variables globally Gaussian, and they are interrelated, then they are independent. And we do it in terms of the a couple of variables which globally is Gaussian and they are interrelated when they are independent. Okay, so I come back to my original description. Again, it's very elementary. And I assume that by observed quantities, yj at point session j equals phi psi j, the value of the basic sphere, the surface pressure of whatever it is, a point j, plus epsilon j, epsilon, epsilon j. And so I compute, I need for doing that, the covariance between these two variables, because this is the matrix which occurs in my linear system, which comes, so it is the expectation of the products of these two sums. And I suppose that the observation errors are mutually interrelated, which are the common variants R. And I suppose that the, the observation errors are interrelated with basic fields. All that might not be reasonable, while not being necessary, absolutely true. 
and do that is I find that the covariance between yj and yk between observation at point z and point k is equal to the covariance function of the fixed phi between point j and k plus r delta gk where r one plus r plus r when j equals k is okay plus zero when uh, j is different of k. And as for the covariance between minus min uh, in non quantity x prime and the observation, it will be equal to the covariance of the field between my estimation point, point, my estimation point psi and the observation point, observation point psi. Now, I consider the case of one, of one unique observation. Correlation to C phi psi psi one times C phi psi one psi one plus R times observation y not y one minus execution of y one. So when I consider how the estimated field I should work on, I have to assume I to consider only the deviation from the field. Okay. But you have to consider it this term. That is what the estimation adds to the expectation of the field of the point of psi. When I look how this varies as a function of psi, I see that it varies exactly like the correlation function, the covariance function with the psi of psi 1. So the deviation implied by the estimation on the mid field of phi we follow exactly the shape of the covariance function between psi and psi 1. The, the observation at point psi 1 influences the estimated field in exactly the same form as the covariance function between psi 1, the observation point, and psi, the kind of the current form. And at point, at observation point, I have that this term C phi psi 1 one, 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 one. <coughs> and the of that, but the est estimated value is the weighted average between the observation and the, est the expectation of the film, the basic expectation of the film is one to one, according to weights which are in inverse proportion to R, to R and C phi of psi one and psi one. It's exactly the same thing as I proved. It's a weighted average in proportion of the uncertainty of the observation on the one hand and in the on the other. If r equals zero, the estimated field will go exactly the other from the observation. If I know on the other hand, I see the r is very large, if r is very large, then the estimation will be very close to the expectation of the field as I know it independently of the observation. Okay, so I'm starting to stop here. I will set you up in the moment and then I go to the general presentation. Are there questions? Please, yeah. Um, how do we actually know the C phi? Beg your pardon, I have a bad How do I actually know what C phi is? Oh, I actually, actually, I, actually, I know how to do it. First and sir, if we, if we must, if we want to do something, we must make a hypothesis. So either we know how we find it. In the general case, when what would be done on uh, from scratch? Uh, it would not from scratch. It would not be from scratch. I will have to have some climate vertical estimate. And here, five will be climate vertical mean of the field 
Now, <coughs> if I do, and that is very clear in term and future, but it also in the high value general definition, if I constantly update an estimation with new data, then E of 5 will be the latest estimate of which I improve with new data. I said this morning that in sequential assimilation, you go from a background estimate, Xb, combined with observation Y, to attain an analysis, in that approach, E of phi will be the background. I think I the forecast which comes from the past, which you update with new observations. I think I can pronounce it correctly. I mean the C of phi, the correlation function. Oh, well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. How do you know the C of phi? What? Again? Okay. Again, you must make hypothesis in the first place. If you start, if you start from climatology, well, you must start the climatology called C of 5, for instance, as deduced from a statistical <coughs> form on measurements made as stations, the same kind of statistics which produced the figures of correlation function I showed at the beginning of my presentation. And if you do updating, then, again, that is very clear in terms of filtering, the system evolves constantly, updating not only the estimate Xb background, but also the covariance matrix of the error on Xb. And that is C of 5. Sequential estimation does that, Pavel will explain it, but, and variational assimilation also does that, because in the linear in the linear case, variational assimilation and sequential assimilation as done by Kalman filter are equivalent. What is that in the system? This anticipation evolves by carrying in time both the estimate XB and the covariance matrix of the error on XB. And that, that is the same thing as expectation as expectation of phi and C of phi. It contains the same information. The system involves an estimate and the associated incertainty, if one accepts it is quite insensitive by the covariance matrix. Anyway, that will become clear later. Sorry, my sense and anticipation of what we put. But if you start, as you know, we must start at least from an estimate, which if they fit us to be based on rational grounds, maybe <coughs> statistics of meteorological things, plus anything that physics can tell you about the necessary properties of these uh, films, for instance, the fact that geotropic balance implies that given the covariance function of uh, the geopolitical field, then uh, the covariance of a wind field is determined at least to some degree. Yes, please. If I mean, the, the, the basic assumption of the population is based on the of variance, should there be a rationale behind the of variance, which we don't even know? You said that the basic assumption of the population is based on the of variance. It's based on finite variance. Finite value? Oh yes, I think it's well. <laughs> meteorological variables, meteorological variables abound. Temperature never goes. <laughs> temperature, surface temperature never goes to uh, 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 80 degrees Celsius, nor minus 100 Celsius. The, the, the meteorological variables are bounded and therefore have, have, have fine invariance. <laughs> well, maybe the bound will be a little larger, but anyway. We do meteorological forecasts, we present claim. No, meteorological variables are bounded and so have fine invariance. Incidentally, as I said it, that this, in the case of the errors are Gaussian, achieves Bayesian emission. Yes, I can say now this achieved in the case the variables, all the variables are Gaussian, 
this achieves the identification. Okay, maybe it's time to go oh, on. Any other questions? Otherwise, we have half an hour break. Half an hour, okay. And, um, and uh, if we can take the transparencies uh, from Bolivia, I will be happy to attend, put them on the. <coughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. And then you can inspect them. So you are sure about copying errors from the whiteboard, which might be awkward sometimes. Okay, so let's continue and have